Welcome to the Dr. Ed Show. I'm Dr. Edmund Stolkowski. You know, we have a couple of wonderful guests today. One of them <laughs> you will be very familiar with, and we have one that is actually returning today. And they were both on my radio show, which you can tune into every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. at a.m. 12:50. The answer, and we always have a wonderful gambit of topics there, and as we do on this this TV show, and that's the Dr. Ed Show again at nine o'clock every Saturday morning at a.m. 12.50, The Answer. You can also listen to us on Rumble.com, Spotify. Just go in and search Dr. Ed Show, subscribe, and share. With us today, a familiar face, a longtime friend. I would call her an old friend, but she gets upset about when I say <laughs> old. You know, I told her as we were walking in today, we were talking about how wonderful this beautiful school is, and Jessie was saying how she didn't have all the stuff when she went to school, and I said, well, she was learning by candlelight back then. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't, that didn't go over too well. But in any case, it's always my pleasure to be with Jesse. Jesse is the founder of Angels for Animals, and she is absolutely an angel for her animals. There are thousands of dogs that own a good life because of Jesse's work and efforts. We also have Carol Hirsch. Carol was on the show several years ago with her husband, Joe, and they are founders of Hearts and Paws Ministries. And Carol's kind of doing the same thing, a little bit differently than Jesse, and it's a wonderful effort because, again, she's raising money to help the lives of animals that have been abused and neglected. So welcome, both of you, Thank to you. the Thank Dr. You. Ed Show. Thank you. Let's start with my friend Jesse. <gasps> Whoa. <laughs> hey, Jess, how did you begin with Angels and Animals? Saw a need. Saw a need that was very needed. You know, all the abuse that's out there, you can't imagine. You just can't. And I thought that I could do, in my little world, better. Because I worked for the uh, Humane Society for a short period of time. And after that, I thought, no, there's got to be more than this. Mm -hmm. So, so you do it a little differently. You don't have a facility. Correct. And we're, you're we're not taking based. in big numbers of dogs at any one time. Right. And you're taking smaller dogs because that's what you can handle better mm -hmm. than the larger dogs. Because right. there's a difference in how you how you have to maintain these animals. Right. But you do something by fostering and finding homes for temporary care. Tell us about that. These are people that help. Uh, they take the dog when it comes in. In fact, I just picked up a new foster, and she is actually a cat person. But she said, "I want to help you." So we have given her two small dogs since then. Did a fantastic job with the first one. Now she's working on the second one. But uh, these are people that take the dogs into their home, start to train them, see where their personality is, what kind of family they would do best in, whether they need another uh, animal companion or not, and just give me information on the personality of the dogs so that we can look for the proper family. Because that's a secret to successful adoption of Forever yes, Home. It is. is matching the dog with its personality to a family mm -hmm. that, that mutually can get along and benefit from right. from sharing each other's lives. You would be surprised how important that is because that dog, if it's in the right circumstance and situation, they will flourish like you can't believe. And people will call me back in a day or two because they do get a two week trial period. I'm keeping that dog. I said, you still have two weeks. So at the, at the end of two weeks, but they tell me right up front, it's working so well because of what we have done up front that they don't have any question in your, their mind that it's going to work, and it does work. Mm -hmm. Having had 13 dogs in my life, I think it's 13, maybe 14, and all but one were rescue dogs. Mm -hmm. Five of them were Jesse, what I call Jesse dogs. They came from Jesse and Angels for Animals. and all were wonderful, mm -hmm. all had different backgrounds. Yeah. Even I had two dogs who were from the same litter. What I'm getting to is that every dog has a different personality. Oh, absolutely, just like people. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you really have to match exactly that dog to the owners, whether they have pets or not. Right. So how do you go about doing that? Well, I take an application, but it's a verbal application over the phone, because I want to hear people, because you hear a lot in what they're telling you, and it isn't necessarily all true. So if you ask a number of questions, yeah, they get to people, talk. People lie or exaggerate? Mm -hmm. They don't tell you the truth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you get 
to hear what they're saying and how they're saying it. And then once you strike a conversation, they just keep on going with it. So they'll tell you things that you need to know, but they're not realizing they're telling you. And then the second person that calls them is the foster home. She calls them and asks them maybe some of the same questions, but also a variety of other questions. And she'll call me and say, you didn't ask this question or you didn't ask that question, but I know she's going to ask it. So then we talk about it and see whether that home is a possibility or not. If it isn't, then I call the person back and we tell them, we don't think that's the right dog for you. If it is, then we take um, a vet reference, groomer, and three personal friends. And I do call everybody. And I get a feel for their home, their family, their personality, and what they can contribute to the dog. If that all clears, then we make an appointment with the adoptive, prospective adoptive family. We do do a home visit, so we can't go rural far. But we take the dog, get in the car, and go to their home, and we check everything out. We spend maybe about an hour talking about the dog, the family, the food, anything that they have on their mind, they can ask us. I don't lie. I tell them up front if there's a problem or what we think might happen or whatever, and they can keep in touch with us, not a problem, for the two weeks. And if they decide to take the dog and it doesn't work out it comes back to us and I give them a full refund because there there is an adoption fee there has to be because I have to pay the vet I have to buy the food and I have to do x-rays and I have to do all this other stuff which I fund and you fund it solely mm -hmm. and I, I know for a fact Jesse drives a bus for the Peters Township School District mm -hmm. and uh, she's been doing that only to support angels for animals basically yes and and then you collect Aluminum I collect cans. aluminum cans, yes, which I take to the crusher. <laughs> and, I, and I love to tell this story. Uh, Jesse and Pete have a couple anti cars, and I, I, of course, am into cars and go to all the car shows and have a couple myself. And I'm at Jesse's house one day, and Jesse says, You got to see what's in my garage. And I think, Gosh, you got a new car, and, and so forth. And it's a garage full of bags of <laughs> aluminum <Man>. cans. So, <laughs> and so it, it, Jesse works really hard at doing what she's doing. And, then we have Carol Hirsch. Now, Carol and Joe founded Hearts and Paws Ministries. Tell us about that, Carol. Well, Joe and I were involved in three different animal rescue groups. And like Jesse, we saw a need, you know, but, and some of the animals were put down because in the shelters, there simply wasn't room for them. And that was heartbreaking. Th that's a hard concept to understand, but when these shelters fill up, they don't know what to do with them. Right. And you can't mm -hmm. turn them loose like some people do. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Well, we thought by starting a pet ministry, we could coordinate some of the groups in the area and give them a venue to show their pets and allow them to get homes that way. You know, So that's why we started doing the pet fairs at the church. This will be our 17th pet fair. Okay, so let's, let's talk about that for okay. a second before we get ahead of it, because <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about it throughout the show. But this is a, at Christ Church which is Christ Methodist, United Methodist Church in Bethel Park, mm -hmm. which is right around the South Hills Village area up from uh, the grocery store across from Home Depot, right in that corner mm -hmm. right there. And you started this fair years ago. COVID kind of interrupted it a little bit, like right. it interrupted, interrupted everything else. But this is the first year since 2019, which was the last time you were on our show, mm -hmm that you're having this big fair. And this is on June 17th. Right. And it starts at nine in the morning? Nine, well, for the public, it's 9.30. 9.30. And we'll be there till three. Three. And so what's gonna happen at this fair? Well, we have a lot, of, so far we have 42 vendors and, and product vendors and, and rescue groups coming total. And we have, including two food trucks that'll be there for uh, the good of the people. <laughs> So, so this is an indoor outdoor event. Yes. But it can be totally indoor if, if the Pittsburgh weather right. goes south that day. <laughs> we, uh, which well, could always happen. The first year after um, we had a pet fair at Westminster, they opened up their doors to us because our our church was under construction. We added a huge building that is now available and that's why we can have the fair at the church for the first time now we had to take it out to South Park after we were at Westminster that one year and they welcomed us there. So we've decided this year, since we have the large building, we can bring it home. 
We have enough room inside that if we have to bring everybody in, we can. But we are, as of right now, if the weather cooperates, having an indoor-outdoor fair. Nice. So let's start with some of the vendors that are going to be there. And the main one, and probably the focus for this, is the adoption tables. Right. And the adoption groups coming. Mm -hmm. So how many adoption groups will you have there? And I, I do know just Angels for Animals will Angels be there. Angels for Animals has been there since the very beginning. And our pet ministry is 21 years old now. We, the first fair was 2004. Wow. So um, there will be a number of animal rescue groups. I'm going to venture about 20. 20 rescue mm -hmm. groups. And the rest are uh, product and anim animal service providers and product vendors. Yeah, we'll break that down and talk about those. Okay. But let's, let's keep focused on, on the adoption. So okay. will there be dogs to see at this event? Yes, and all different breeds. And cats? And cats. And? Well, we have uh, a parrot rescue yes. group too. So, so Heart you, and soul you got the whole, rescue. you got the whole, any fish, any fish showing <laughs> <Well>. up? <laughs> <laughs> no, we've never had any fish, but we do have a fish pond at the church. <laughs> People are welcome to take a look at that. It's very so, pretty. Very so pretty. there's an interesting law here that at these fairs, you can't adopt a dog, but you can adopt right. a cat and take right. a cat home with you. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about that, Jess. Well, it's a Pennsylvania law. Uh, the dog, uh, man whatever he's called he walks through there and he will tell you and he will give you papers and say <coughs> you know you're not allowed to adopt you can take applications and you can speak to the people after the fair but you cannot do it on site right that's for the protection of the animals it's a, the mm -hmm. warden the warden the dog okay. warden yeah. <laughs> and he comes in plain clothes you won't know yeah, who he he'll is just walk but up to you and you know <laughs> we have signs posted that you, you know to let the public know that it's not permissible to take any in a dog right from the mm -hmm. ground. Cats are a different story. If somebody falls in love with a cat, they can theoretically take it home. However, most of the cat rescues are just as vigilant as the dog rescues. They want to make a veterinary background call first and find out how they've cared for pets in the past. Um, they may also want to make a home visit. So we encourage that and we respect that and we tell people don't be angry if you can't take the cat right then and there because the group has good reason for wanting to know that it's going into a good home. Yeah, there's this dichotomy between cats and dogs and even Jesse said, well, you have a new uh, foster home care mm. provider who's a cat person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you assume, well, they're a cat, they like cats and dog people like dogs and you, you can't switch, but cats kind of fall under a different concept mm -hmm. they're a little right. more independent dogs right. are a little more dependent on us for sure and dogs have to be on a leash when you walk them cats <laughs> don't I mean there, there's mm -hmm. this this separation between the two mm -hmm. but it is important again to match a cat with a family as it is with a dog that's right you know especially if there's a dog in the household you want to see how that dog is going to react to the cat and the cat's going to react to the dog and it, it's a slow process of people who thrust one animal on another or asking for trouble. You know, you need to separate them and uh, let them get to know each other. And there may be some hissing and growling and barking and carrying on, but eventually they will accept each other if it's done right. But yeah. you know, it's, it's the same way right. with a dog. <clears throat> and that's why we do the home visit too, to see how the in-home dog is going to react. Mm -hmm. And they don't immediately adjust to the other animal right away. It right. might take a couple of days. But we'll mm -hmm. get a call from the adoptive people and they'll say, I can't believe they slept together last night, they're eating <laughs> together, they're playing. But it, it'll happen, but mm -hmm. you have to give it time. That's right. Yeah. It, and there's slow a, introduction. Yes. Mm -hmm. there, there's a slow introduction. And what I've noticed in my years of, of bringing in dogs into the home where I already had dogs, because mm -hmm. at one time I had six, uh, you see that the new dogs start to mimic and kind of Mm -hmm, they will follow what the mm -hmm. what the other dogs are doing, and then they kind of become that pack, that cohesive right. unit. And I know with my six, they were eating, sleeping, going to the bathroom, doing everything all at the same mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, there was, were never any issues. And I kind of notice that with other people that I've yeah. interact with that are bringing dogs into their home. You know, adding a dog when one mm -hmm. passes away and so yeah. forth. And and that new dog kind of gets in there. There's always that alpha dog though. Oh yeah, yeah. but yeah. that's. One of the reasons why we always require an in-house dog already. We want that our dog to have a companion, 
but their dog will help train the new dog. That's a little that's trick. That's true, yeah. A little trick. So, so like, when I took Jesse's first dog, um, she actually came to my house, and I knew Jesse, and I, I and she said, "I got to do a home inspection." And, and <laughs> I know Jesse, you just want to be nosy. But anyway, <laughs> you know, it is it is important because these dogs come from such varied backgrounds when when they're brought to to you or to these other agencies, right? And you have to really match that, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of the rescues, <clears throat> which upsets me tremendously. They'll bring in a dog one day, adopt it the next day, and maybe two days later it comes back. Right. They haven't done the groundwork. They mm -hmm. don't know the dog, and especially mm -hmm. coming out of foreign countries. My question is this, do they know how to speak English? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of a funny, you know, because I don't know. If they, ha they are in a foreign country, they speak their own language. Yeah. So how would the, our dogs, well, you know, they adjust to it, but they have not, that rescue has not done their homework. They don't know the personality of that dog. They don't know how it's going to react because they don't know the dog. And I think you've got to know the dog before you can adopt it out. You know, the dogs seem to understand, and I don't know if it's a mental <laughs> communication or what. I but, know what you're saying. Um, you know, I've taken dogs from you. And they all had some bizarre names, which I changed oh, immediately. Yeah. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I think I, the only dog I kept that had the same name that came into the house was Tucker. The rest mm -hmm. of them, I, I, oh, Meg Ryan. Meg, Meg yeah. Ryan had, mm -hmm. I kept her name. But you had given these dogs because you didn't even know their names. No. And you gave mm -hmm. them bizarre names, and I changed those <laughs> right away. No, my foster homes did that. I don't, uh, I don't deal with that. I let them do it. But then the new people, when they adopt them, they change them anyway. So, so like when I had Abby, the first day I took Abby in, and I took her sight unseen, I got a call from Jesse. I can still remember where I was when I got the call. She said, I got this little. I said, bring her over, Jess. <laughs> and um, she was super. But you, they named her Dash. And I thought, this dog isn't going to be Dash. No. <laughs> and, and I said to her, would you? How about the name Abby? And she gave me a kiss, and she was Abby from that minute on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd call. I said, "Hey, Abby." She came running. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's something more that we don't quite understand that they connect they with. They know. Yeah, they know. know. And I've heard dogs, you know, where their owners talk in foreign languages to them, mm -hmm. and they're understanding English and understanding the, mm -hmm. you know, the foreign language as well. Yeah. So it isn't the language; it's more mm -hmm. of, I think, of a, a connection. Well, and that's kind of my yeah. way of telling you that dog is not ready to go yet. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's you can't do that, especially <coughs> if you're coming in from a foreign country, because you have to understand you've taken that dog out of what they know and bringing him into a totally foreign situation, mm -hmm. and they need time to adjust. They need time to say, hey, where am I? What's going on? Am I going to be fed? Am I going to be taken out? They have to have that period of adjustment. Mm -hmm. Well, right. The two that I rescued from you, which I, don't know, I called them Zach and Zoe. I don't mm -hmm. remember what you called them, but Zach came to me, and these were, I think I was their sixth home. Mm -hmm. They had five wow. homes prior where they were adopted out and brought back. And those were the, I yelled at you all the time, those were the toughest dogs that I ever had to, to integrate. Mm -hmm. but, but they had, they were interbred too much, and mm -hmm. they had defects, hearing, sight, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then they were never integrated. And they were super dogs. But Zach came first, and mm -hmm. he was a wreck until Zoe showed up because they had never been separated. Right. You said, you have to take both of them. Ah, no problem. They were bonded, yeah. Yeah, they were bonded. Mm -hmm. And he was, I, I mean, the next day I almost gave him back to you because he was just trouble and disrupting the whole pack. And But the, then Zoe came, I, I don't know, three days later. We had to have her spade. We that, had to have her yeah, spade. Yeah, good memory, delay. Jess. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was a while back. And... <coughs> um, the minute she walked in the door, you saw a sudden change in this dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he didn't know what happened to her. He didn't know what happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, there, there's a lot that goes into this, and you oh, really, yeah. you really have to think about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we had a dog that was trained by another dog to use the, the outside facilities. He, she, he had never been housebroken properly when he came to us. We couldn't housebreak him, and my friend took him for a year, couldn't housebreak him in her house either. When we brought him back to our house, we had a Basset hound at the time, and the Basset trained him to go in and out yeah. with her, mm -hmm. and he, she eventually trained him to use the backyard and not 
the living room floor and every place else in the house. Wow. It was a beautiful thing to see. Yeah. It broke her fear. She was, I guess she was beaten when she was young, you know, and frightened because I could walk that dog all over the neighborhood and she wouldn't go until she was back in our house. But the dog that we had, our Bassett, actually broke that fear and trained her to be housebroken. Okay. Well, you know, it, it's it's so bizarre, but like when I got took Meg Ryan from you, Meg Ryan was a puppy mill dog or a yep. breeder, heavy breeder dog or whatever. She was the sweetest dog in the world, all torn up, sewn together, missing part of her ear oh. and all that stuff. But she could not walk on the ceramic towel or the hardwood floors in my house. Mm -hmm. and she had never experienced that. Mm -hmm. and she didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. and, and very bright dog, but that was so foreign to her because I think she was always out on concrete. In fact, I don't really think she reacted very well to grass initially. Mm. They don't know grass. Yeah. That's why. And I had to put towels down and she would hop from towel to towel. <laughs> And after a couple of days, then she figured out she could walk, and then it was never a problem. But mm -hmm. are these things you have to do because right. these dogs have experiences, and you don't know what they right. are, mm -hmm. you know? Well, I tell everybody that adopts one, think puppy, because that mentally that's where the dog is. It's still puppy. It's never had a puppyhood. Mm -hmm. So until mm -hmm. they get through that, that's what you experience. Because in some mm -hmm. places, these dogs are nothing more than commodities. They're, exactly. They're, yep. they're dollar bills. You got mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And they don't have any compassion or concern for the animal whatsoever. Just as long as it's producing, yep. right, right. they'll throw food on the floor and mm -hmm. let them grab what they can. And that's, uh, that's exactly what happens. It takes patience and compassion. Yeah. So you have all these agencies coming I know Jesse's bringing some puppies, puppies <laughs> which is kind of rare at these events. Right. You know, yeah. they're, they're. You don't see too many puppies. You don't see too many puppies. Uh -uh. So tell us a little bit about those puppies. Uh, they're purebred Shih Tzus, cute as can be, chubby as can be. They're being fed very well. They will be very, very healthy. In fact, they're going to the vet today to have their first shot. And uh, there are six, but we're only bringing five. We think that the, the other dog has a, a problem, so we're just Aww. keeping him back mm -hmm. until we see. But there are uh, four boys and one girl that are coming. Nice. Very mm -hmm. good. So all these adoption agencies will be there. Mm -hmm. You can see some of the pets that they bring. You can uh -huh. take, they'll take applications, can't take the dogs home. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then you have some pet product vendors coming. Mm -hmm. So pet products like what, Carol? Well, we have DDT Enterprises, and they make green water. And it will be demonstrated there. It's not the color green, but the idea is that it's healthy for people and pets. Uh, we have a pet portrait artist coming. We have uh, Bethel Park Animal Clinic. They have been our Ask the Vet for a number of pet fairs. People can ask questions and uh, hopefully get answers and maybe schedule an appointment if need be. Um, we have seeing spots photography. We have so what, what's, uh, all, what's all that, kinds of things. What's the photography thing? Uh, well, they have a booth there, and they are going to take animal portraits. And, so they'll, mm -hmm. they'll take a picture of you, and are you uh -huh. allowed to bring your pet to the event? Yeah, definitely. People are allowed to bring their own pets to the fair. So if, if you, they bring their own pet, they're on a leash, of course. Right, or in a, in a crate. Or in a crate, mm -hmm. or in a buggy. Like buggy I, or like something, yeah. Like I used yeah. to have to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that's nice, because some, some events won't welcome pets. That's uh -huh. nice that you do. Right. Because people want to take their pets out and have a good day they with everything. They do. People like to dress them up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they're welcome to do that, too. And then you now have the opportunity to have a picture taken, a professional picture mm -hmm. taken with your mm -hmm. pet. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And yep. uh, you also have see. the baskets too. Oh, we have a, a silent auction. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk a little bit about that right now since you brought it up. You have to raise money, and that's the whole purpose of this is to raise money to fund their pantry. Mm -hmm. your, to raise the pan the, the pantry that you right. provide food for people who can't afford to feed their, their animals. Right. So you do this in one way by these baskets, and people are donating. So tell me what they're donating. How, if they want to donate, how do they do that? and what these baskets are? Well, they're most welcome to donate a basket if they like. All the vendors and the participants have been asked if they would like to donate a basket. Mm -hmm. Has to be a $25 or more value. And so we have most of them offering to do that. 
I, if people want to donate, they could easily call the church, 412-835-6621. Um, That's the general number. Or the pet Hearts and Paws Pet Hotline, which is 412-277-1096. And let us know they'd like to donate. And they could bring it up to the church at any time. And between now and the fair, we'll pick it up there. So the site of an auction is a, a piece of paper and you just write your name and mm -hmm. what you're, you're bidding and there's on. there's a drawing, you know, and then by the end of the day, hopefully if people are still there, they can hand them their prize to take home or it'll be delivered. For instance, I'm bringing a basket, looks like an old wash tub filled with dog things. Mm -hmm. uh, my friend Vera, she got one of those roll away things and she's putting picnic items in that. And I won it la the last fair we had was beautiful. She had so much stuff in her, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> so these are the type of things people think about. They can, mm -hmm. uh, people maybe if they uh, are into ladies' products, I know I've seen that there too. They'll, mm -hmm. they'll put, make a basket of that. Maybe the Tupperware lady would ma make a right. basket. So anything, it doesn't have to be animal related. You right. can do any kind of a basket. The mm -hmm. Tupperware lady? Yeah. <laughs> don't we still have those? I don't know. We still have Tupperware. I don't you know. You have to understand I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of our church members made us a beautiful silk pillow. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of those that you would put on a couch or a bed. And that'll be on the silent auction table, too. And the whole purpose so. is to raise money mm -hmm. for your food pantry. Right. Well, we also do veterinary grants for people who can't afford veterinary care. So some of that will go into the veterinary care fund or help to fund Buttons Pantry. Buttons Pantry is also supported by local pet stores. We go in, in fact, this weekend we'll be in Ho Hollywood Feed uh, all day Saturday collecting food from people who come into the store to shop. And the following week we're at Petco on Fort Cox Road for the same thing. And we collect canned food, dry food, and anything else anybody wants to donate. And uh, we provide food for families that can't afford to feed their pets mm -hmm. at this time. Um, and we accept donations for uh, food too. If people want to drop it off at the church, we will pick it up there and take it out to our storage locker, which is we call Buttons Pantry. Okay, well, we're gonna take a break here in a, in a minute, but when we come back, I wanna focus a little more on the food pantry and, and if you are in need of help, Mm -hmm. help your pet how people go about doing that okay and this is just to remind everybody the hearts and paws 17th annual event held at Christ Church in Bethel Park from 9 30 to 3 o'clock mm -hmm. and it's free you don't have to pay to get right. in no admission and that's again June 17th and indoors or outdoors rain or shine doesn't matter right. because if it rains we're all going to be gonna inside, be inside. <laughs> and you have about 42 different vendors tables pet adoptions mm -hmm. and a lot of things of interest there yes all right we're going to take a break we'll be right back thank you <laughs> Welcome back to the Dr. Ed Show. You know, you can listen to me live every Saturday morning on my radio show on AM 1250, The Answer, from 9 to 10, the Dr. Ed Show, where we do kind of the same thing, have a lot of guests on talking about a lot of different things, focusing always on your health and wellness. You know, we never diagnose, we never treat, we just hope to educate and inform so that you're empowered to be in charge of your own health and wellness. And we do that for pets every once in a while also. My guests today, Jesse Klepsik from Angels for Animals, and Carol Hirsch, founder of Hearts and Paws Ministries, were on the radio show last week, actually, uh, talking about this very topic. And I know the response was, was very good because they're working from their hearts. Mm. Appropriate name. And we know Jesse's an angel, although Jesse, I've known for a long time, she has a little bit of devil in her. <laughs> <laughs> No, let's, we were talking about your, your, your uh, event that you're having, the festival, that's on June 17th from 9.30 to 3. Mm -hmm. And it's at Christ Church 
on in Bethel Park, and that's right. uh, Highland Avenue. If the address is 44 Highland Road. Highland Road. We're right at the uh, corner of Oxford and Highland. Yeah, it's a pretty church. It's mm -hmm. on the left up on the hill. And you've had this ministry for how many years, Carol? Well, we're going on 21 years now. The first pet fair was 2004. We actually started the ministry in 2002, and this will be our 17th pet fair. And you have at least 42 different vendors, and during break we were kind of talking a little bit, and Jesse brought up a, a wonderful concept over here. You actually have these uh, rescue agencies, these that are wanting to find homes, adopt out these animals for into forever homes. Mm -hmm. But there are actually specific ones there if you're looking for a specific breed, because we right. were talking about matching a home to the animal. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's, you need a specific breed for that match. Tell us a little bit about that, Jess. I always tell people to research the breed they are thinking about adopting, because not every family really wants that breed or can accommodate that breed. For instance, if you wanted a Jack Russell Terrier, you have to know the breed because right. you're going to be entertaining that dog 27 hours a day, guaranteed. Now, do you have that time? Probably not. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we talk about the breeds and stuff, and if people are unsure, I always tell them to go to the internet, check the breeds out. But this is an excellent opportunity to meet the people there that have those breeds because as far as I know, the times that I have been at this fair, which has been since the beginning, we do the rescues actually hone in on a specific breed. Now myself, I do multiple breeds, but I do small. Other ones, they have the big dogs. I've seen real, you know, the Great Danes at your fair. Mm -hmm. I've seen the Huskies and the big animals like that. Can you, uh, can you deal with the hair on the dog? Right. That's another thing. Can you deal with the exercise that this dog's going to need? Maybe the training. So you can talk to these people and get an idea of what those breeds need. And there's mm -hmm. some allergy concern, although mm -hmm. that's a, really a myth that there's an allergy-free dog. There is no such thing as an allergy-free <laughs> dog. Everybody that calls me wants an allergy-free dog. And I said, yeah. there isn't any such animal. There You'll get ones that are on the lower end of the right. spectrum exactly. and some on the higher. But there is no specific breed. That's absolutely true. Right. And, you know, I was always partial to dachshunds. Those were the ones that I was raised with. Mm -hmm. It was my family dog. I think every one of my uncles had dachshunds. Yeah. And, and those are the ones I know. I love all dogs. But those are the ones I would rescue because I knew the breed right. and was comfortable with them and partial to them. I, even when I see a dachshund now, I melt when I see one. Right. You know? Uh, but you really have to give good consideration to that. Right. And then children, too. If you have young kids, what breed is good with younger kids? Hey, so hey. You, you have to know that going in. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of kids, there's something at the event called Kids Corner. Tell us about that, Carol. Well, we're going to have a table for, for kids. It may not be for the entire day. We may have just a couple of hours in the morning, a couple of hours in the afternoon. But it'll allow kids to express their creativity and do some artwork and uh, play some games, perhaps, having to do with animals. So you might not be coming to take home a dog, you know, to, <laughs> to find a, a pet, but there are other events to, for entertainment right. and have some fun and some community. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And information. Yeah, well, a lot lots of, of information. information. So th you have the Kids Corner and th you're going to be doing something called Animal Art? Mm -hmm. Tell and us about that. That could be with balloons or painting animals or drawing animals. There, there will be a teacher there working with the kids on that. And then you brought up early in the first segment of the show talking about the vet that's going to be there. Mm -hmm. I think we need to talk a little more in depth about the about what the vet's going to be doing and why the veterinarian is there. Well, the Bethel Park Animal Clinic will be our Ask the Vet table as they have been for the last several pet fairs that we've done. Mm -hmm. And if people have questions, they can ask for advice or give them some guidance about what to do or uh, if they need an appointment, they certainly could uh, make an appointment through them at that time. So you don't have to be a patient of that clinic. No, you can no. walk up and say, hey, my right. dog has an ear infection. What do I do? And they'll, right. they'll try to help mm -hmm. you out. That's exactly right. And I, I imagine that's got to be a pretty popular table there. Yes. <laughs> And, yes, indeed. And it's not like you need an appointment. You're just walking through the fair and mm -hmm. walk up to the table and, and 
and speak say. to the professionals that are there. Mm -hmm. And the actual veterinarian will be there? Right. I believe so. Yeah. I hope so that there isn't an emergency or something. Yeah. The table will be there. Somebody from Bethel Park Animal Clinic will be manning the table. That, that's important, mm -hmm. you know, because you hear a lot of things and, you know, even though you have a degree, you can, there are different ways and different angles, so it's always important to talk to other people right. and, and get their views and, and their experiences mm -hmm. on that. You know what I wanted to ask you? Are you having anybody coming from the animal food companies? Yes, Farmina is coming. They're based in Italy, and uh, they will have a, a booth there, and Hollywood Feed will be right beside them, and that's where, we, really, that's where I met Farmina because that's one of the stores that we do, where we do food collections. We'll be there on Saturday, and Farmina had a table set up, and apparently it's a very good food, and they may give out samples from their booth. So you have just those two? With so far, food? so far. But people can still register for the fair up to the end of May. May 31st is the deadline. So we could have more booths than we already have by that time. So your Buttons Pantry, is that, why the name Buttons? Well, she was our cat. Uh, Joe and I had adopted her, and she was only four years old when she contracted mouth cancer. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know what it was. She, her tongue was blood red, and we called uh, a specialist in. We finally found out she needed to go to PVSEC, where she had a lot of the cancer removed and gave us another year with her. But then when she passed, we, we named the pantry for her, just as a way of remembering her. And so what does the pantry do? We collect food in the local pet stores and we deliver it to people who need it. We so the local pet stores are donating the right, food. Right, largely, and we have individuals. For example, if somebody loses a dog and they pass away suddenly, they'll call us and say, we have food to donate to you, do you want it? And we'll always take it because we can always find a family that can use it. We try to match the food we give them to what they're used to. And, and, and if they have to introduce a new food, we tell them to mix it in with what they're used to. So where is this Buttons pet, uh, Pantry located? It's a storage locker out on Route 88, in 88 storage, right behind the sheets. And we have to rent the space because even though we have a huge church, there isn't room for Buttons Pantry. It's just too much. So we rent a space in the storage locker. It's, it's climate controlled, which is a good thing. And if I'm in need of pet food because I'm having some financial mm -hmm. issues right now, how do we go about contacting Buttons Pantry? You would contact us through our hotline, which is 412-277-1096. I'm probably the one who will answer the phone and take the call. And then we have a wonderful couple who pretty much handles the delivery of the food. So you don't even have to come to get it. No, we, well, we, we meet people at the church. We meet people at the church because we want people to see that the church is where you go when you need help. Right. We very rarely have anybody come straight to the locker. It's mostly we bring the church and the food to them. So give that number out again. 412-277-1096. And that's open to anybody. You don't have to qualify or right. present any papers or we anything We don't have like anybody fill out forms. If they tell us they need it, we believe them and we give it to them. Awesome. You know, we don't want to make this complicated. Most people are embarrassed to ask. We don't want them to be embarrassed. We, sometimes it's a temporary situation. Somebody's in cancer treatment. They can't work, or with the pandemic, we had quite a few people who turned to us for help because they were out of work or you know, some situation was preventing them from working. Oh, I, I think that a lot of, that created a lot of problems for a lot of people, and mm -hmm. I, a lot of animals got turned into rescue agencies right. because they, people couldn't afford to keep them any longer. Mm -hmm. And you know, that, this, that whole thing disrupted everything. That's right. And I, now also tell the, your audience what other thing you're going to have there? You said you had a lot of things that were donated. You want to move, and that you're taking so that they can have access to getting some of that. Right. Correct. Well, some of the things are brand new. We have a ton of leashes, collars, harnesses, and they will go on our sale table because we need to raise funds for our veterinary grant program and for Buttons Pantry. Okay. So let's talk about the the, the veterinary help program that you have. Mm -hmm. 
There are two people who just can call us on that same hotline number if they need help with veterinary care. And we have, uh, we put it through, I, I'm the one who gets the call and I describe the situation without any names, it's anonymous, to our committee. We have to have at least three people approve a veterinary grant. And then we, we give up to $300, which isn't a whole lot in today's world, but it's often enough to pay for an office visit, an exam, and maybe some medication. And it doesn't matter what veterinary office they right, go to. Right, right. Mm -hmm. You just have to... They could go to the vet of their choice. If they don't know some place to go, we recommend some places, depending upon where they live, and try to see that the animal gets some help and they get help. And most people are very, very grateful. And most, all the people are very, very honest. If we, if they tell us they need help, we believe them. We don't make them fill out a bunch of forms and make it difficult for them. We try to make it easy. Yeah, that, that's and, important because sometimes mm -hmm. what you have to go through to get help right. is more work than what mm -hmm. you get, Right. you know? And there really aren't government agencies out there that, that right. step in and do any of this. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important for people like yourself and Jesse and, and church organizations that actually go and do this. Church also has a yearly blessing. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, we do that usually around the birthday of St. Francis of Assisi, which is October 4th. So we've scheduled it for October 1st of this year. It's always a Sunday and we have people come in, we do a little service and then we do an individual blessing. And we, we pray for the family that is taking care of the pet. You know, we ask God to bless the home in which it lives. And as sometimes people have an animal when they come to those services that, are, that is sick or awaiting surgery. And we pray for that individually uh, for their condition. Nice. But we sing hymns and we pray. And it's just like a people service. And what always amazes me is no matter how many animals are there, they're so well behaved. Yeah. <laughs> Once they get them in and they, they sit down and settle down and lie down, you can you'd hear, you'd hear a pin drop in that room. Well, it's think, amazing. I think the animals pick up on the energy of the room. That's yeah. right. I've noticed this over the years. If you walk into somebody's house and there's a dog and you walk in all hyper, the dog gets hyper. If you walk in all calm, the dog is calm. <laughs> And I don't think people understand that when they mm -hmm. have a dog that wants to jump on somebody when they come into the house, it's probably because that person and, and the owner are all excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if everybody was calm, that probably would not happen. Mm -hmm. Do you work with other churches? Yes, in fact, we have a sister church called Un Unity Presbyterian, and they're on Green Tree Road. It's 1146 Green Tree Road. It's at the juncture of Potomac Avenue and Green Tree Road, if you're familiar with that part of town. And they have been wonderful to us. They have a pet pantry also, and, and they designate a, a rescue group or a rescue organization once a month that receives the, the donations that they receive in their pantry. So we are the recipient of their gifts as of the month of May. They're also having an event right before ours on June 10th, and it'll be like a mini fair. Some of the groups that are at our fair will also be at their fair. And um, they have a blessing of the animal service every half hour. They have it broken down into half hour segments. And then as they finish being in the blessing service, they come outside and they can visit the booths and they have food trucks and it's a little fair too. So that's on um, June 10th. And again, what's the address? Uh, 1146, yes, 1146. Mm -hmm. uh, Green Tree Road. Green Tree Road. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to register for that either. It's open. You don't. Just, for the blessing, you don't. Now, they also have a, a service of remembrance, which is November 4th this year. And if people have lost pets, they can go there, and it's a little like a human service. So they are recognized. They have a picture of the pet up on a screen. They're called forward, and they light a candle and pray. And for some people, that's necessary. They need closure, you know, after they've lost a pet. And this certainly provides that opportunity. We send people there because the, the, rev, the service that they're doing is beautiful. And we have attended and taken people there. So they do it twice a year, spring and fall. And um, they just had it recently. And now they've scheduled their fall service for November 4th. See, I, I see this all as being very wonderful and the reason being 
as a pro I don't have any animals now, but I've had them my whole mm -hmm. life. I think I've, up until I lost my last dog two years ago oh, or wow. so, I probably have only been four years without dogs in my whole mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. They are part of your family. That's right. And in, in this country, we seem to be putting restrictions on them. You can't take them to restaurants. You can't take them in the stores. Mm -hmm. You can't do this. Although I see a lot of people just kind of violating the, <laughs> violating the rules, which, right. I, which I give them a thumbs up on. Mm -hmm. In Europe, uh, dogs are a lot more accepted. You can take them into restaurants. You can take them into places. And I think I mm -hmm. think there's we've got to put a make a move on that and right. start putting some pressure on. Mm -hmm. Getting these, um, I think dogs were thought to be dirty animals at one time, and that's maybe why, or just work animals, mm -hmm. you know. And it, that that has also changed, you know. The old concept of having a dog tied to a tree in the mm -hmm. backyard of the doghouse has kind of gone to the wayside yeah. over here. I mean, there there are some work dogs, sheep herding dogs. There are some hunting dogs, but for the most part, our dogs are part mm -hmm. of the family and mm -hmm. and thought of as as that way. Is, That's is, is exactly being, right. Being little toddlers forever, mm -hmm. you know. So maybe maybe we need to start a new group, the, <laughs> the uh, education and move that along. A right. new movement. Yeah. yeah. So w with all these different vendors that are coming, and you mentioned food trucks, mm -hmm. wh wh what's that about? Well, that's to serve the people, and uh, we have Roadrunner Dogs coming, D-A-W-G-S. And he has a wide variety, both vegetarian and carnivorous <laughs> items for sale. And he makes homemade lemonade, the kind that's squeezed, you know, it's really good. And uh, if it's a good hot day, I'm sure that'll taste good on June 17th. And we have another vendor from Castle Shannon, it's called the Shannon Sweet Stop. And he will be providing dessert type items and ice cream and things like that. So there's, there's a whole gambit of reasons to come. Absolutely. You know. Yep. You so, might just find your best friend there, so come and look for a pet. So you're focusing on adoption. Mm-hmm. And that's the main goal. The second goal is to raise money to fund Buttons Pantry mm -hmm. and for grants for veterinarian care. Correct. Where do you see this going? Well, I think We've had people join our church because of the pet ministry. I had one lady say to me, if you care that much about animals, how much more will you care about me? So if anyone who's listening or watching is looking for a church, it's a wonderful place to be. I've been a member there for 39 years. My husband and I were married there and we joined the choir before we joined the church. We were six months in the choir because we, we came from another church that had a wonderful choir and that's where we actually met. And then um, we were married 1984 and we've been there ever since and Joe was buried from there uh, not too long ago, 2021. And I decided I was gonna do this fair this year in his honor and in his memory and a lot of the people that are still part of it remember him and you know, it's working out well. It's making me feel that I can carry on what he started. So are you already working on the next, the fair for next year? <laughs> well, we're learning from this one. We're doing some things differently. We've never done an indoor-outdoor fair. I have become more computer savvy <laughs> because I used to handle all the registrations with a, an envelope and a stamp, and now we're doing it all by computer. The church staff has become involved. We have a professional doing our brochure this year. We've always had somebody from the group do it. It'll be done professionally by a staff member. And uh, the people could pay online with pen, PayPal and all uh -huh. the different things that are and available now. And you're speaking now. about the, the vendors. Mm-hmm, yeah. yeah, it's much more efficient, much less time consuming. So I'm learning a lot in this um, experience. My, our pastor is fabulous. Reverend Chris Morgan and his wife Jen, they have contributed so much to this effort and so have the other staff people working back in that office. So I'm very grateful to them for the support and uh, the structure that they've given us for this fair. So what's the parking situation going to be like there? Excellent. We have a big parking lot. There's a lot of space to park. Shouldn't be a problem. Shouldn't be a problem. We have three entrances off Highland Road. One will be blocked off because we're going to put booths back in there. But, uh, and that would be entrance 17. We have over 20 entrances to that building. It's huge. 
but uh, they'll be clearly marked and people will know where to go. Great. Jess, I don't know, give you a question that I know you will be able to answer. So June 17th, mid-June, we can get some warm weather here. How should people dress their dogs for that occasion? <laughs> Colorfully <laughs> and cute. And I'm having five puppies there and cookies for the kids. So well, bring I'm, your kids. Well, I, I'm talking a little bit about there's going to be heat and sunshine and so forth. So what about water situation? Yes, there is a little dish that you can get. It's collapsible and it's like a rubber thing. It collapses down like this. If you go to the dog store and get one, it'll come up like this. Carry water with you all the time. Mm -hmm. Whether you're walking or just going, you know, wherever for your dog, because your dog needs water. And you can pour water in and then what he doesn't drink, you can throw out. And uh, do not walk a lot in the sun. You know, if we're mm -hmm. inside and, and the, there will be tents outside where you that's can right. get to the shade, be careful on the asphalt with the dog's feet. And, that's, and that's very important. That could be an issue because that's yep. holding that heat and that, right. and it can burn the paw, mm -hmm. the pads yeah. of the dog. Yeah, and if you think you're going to have any problem with that, leave the dog at home. Right. You know, because you're fooling with an unknown there because dogs do get heat stroke. And people don't realize that. And even just on their bare skin, too, you know, white dogs especially. Yeah, you know, it, this was a while back, but I probably 2004, somewhere in there. And I was MC at the Rose Bowl in California. Oh, really? And there was a big pet event uh, put on by um, Animal Wellness Magazine. And, and they held it then, at the beginning of June, because of in California there's something called June gloom and I was there last uh, last June and there was June gloom it was cold and misty and gray it looked like Pittsburgh and uh, so happened the June gloom didn't happen mm -hmm. and so there was this huge vet there were thousands of people there bringing their dogs and and so forth all kind of celebrities there and the dogs couldn't walk on the concrete and the asphalt because it was too hot. Mm. And we as a group were cutting cloths and, and trying to tie them on the dog's paws. And, and oh. the people that were selling any kind of shoes for dogs sold out like, like right mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep in mind that right. weather can have a severe impact Right. On, on your time. animal right. on any given point in time. And you right. can't lock a car dog in a car. You oh, no, never. You can't right. crack the window and think, no. think that's going to keep the dog comfortable because heat stroke happens right away. Yep, just like a child. Yeah, and yep. and the car can get to death rates of heat in, in, in a very short amount of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, living in Arizona for all those years, that was actually a huge problem for little kids and animals. Mm -hmm. People just don't think. And, right. and you're taking on a big responsibility and you have mm -hmm. to think with that responsibility. Right, so if you have any doubt, leave the dog at home. Yeah. Yep. If it's that hot, yep. You know, and, mm -hmm. and then, you know, you're coming to an event, think ahead. Look right. at the weather, think of how long you're gonna be there. Right. And, and dress accordingly. Yeah, food is not important, but water is absolutely a necessity. Mm -hmm. Bring the water. And you'll have water there. We'll I know water. you do. Yeah. We always have bowls all around, right. mm -hmm. inside and outside. If our our groups who will be outside will be on grass, that was part of the reason we couldn't do the fair. In I guess it was 2016, our church was under construction, and we they took the grassy area for a parking mm -hmm. lot, you know, until they reconstructed that part of the of the church property. So we were over at Westminster Presbyterian that year, and they were wonderful to us. They opened up their church so we could have our fair, but we couldn't put animals on hot asphalt no, in that parking lot. You that, have yeah. to have a grassy area to do an event like this if it's going to be outside. So give us a little brief list of some of the vendors that'll be there. The vendors, okay. Uh, well, we mentioned Hollywood Feed and Farmina Foods. Um, LCR Creations, they make beds and blankets and toys and things for dogs. They'll be there for, and cats, they'll be there for the first time this year. We have Duty Deeds, 
that uh, pooper picker uppers. Pooper picker uppers. <laughs> They're friends with LCR Creations. They'll probably be side by side. My Three Cats and Company. That's Carolyn Koslowski, who is the chairperson for um, the Unity Presbyterian Pet Ministry called Creatures of the Creator. We've got about a minute, so give us a couple more. Okay. Um, let's see. Pause up professional dog training. Keystone Canine Training will be there. And, and we're um, going to talk about training. Training is extremely important for your animal. Yes, it and is. I huh? think they train the owner more than they train the dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Yes. <laughs> now, we have at least two trainers that will be there. Um, Oh my, well, that, that pretty much covers the Pet Glam is another, uh, and um, oh boy. Zero Res. Uh, Camp Bow Wow. Zero Res. Zero Res. They're going to do a demonstration of how to clean your carpet. Wonderful. Okay, awesome. And they'll be outdoors with us. Okay, this is Hearts and Paws Ministry Festival held June 17th, 930 to 3 o'clock. It is free. It's at the Christ Church Methodist at uh, Bethel Park, Highland Road, mm -hmm. and um, everybody's welcome. That's right. Welcome to bring your dogs, welcome to bring your kids, there's something mm -hmm. for everybody there. That's right. And, and just tell us that they saw us on your show. Yeah, there you go. What will that <laughs> yes, get you, Yes, that Jess? would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a hug. <laughs> hey, I want to thank Jesse Klepsik, Angels for Animals, and Carol Hirsch, of the pa Hearts and Paws Ministry. And thank you for having us. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime. Remember, a healthy pet is a happy pet. When you're healthy, you're happy as well. And you can listen to me live every Saturday morning at 9 o'clock on AM 1250 The Answer, rumble.com, Spotify, you know, all those social media stuff. God bless. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.